this is the next piece you're working on? Yes, this one I cut only a few weeks ago, so it's a large one. And as I said, you can sort of, this one's like really full, there's Have no spaces really in it. Or is this the first print off? No, I've done some prints okay. of this one, yeah, before. But, um, yeah. So, so you can hear that, you can hear that sound? Oh, yes, I can yeah. hear it now. That, that means it's okay. That's yep. Okay. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. The Black Dog Art Exhibition uh, is the brainchild of Emma Finch, who's an art therapist at the Amaru Neighbourhood Centre and its aim is to help people particularly suffering from anxiety and depression and to educate the public about mental illness. Oh, and today we're setting up the, the Black Dog uh, Art Exhibition and our theme this year is Shadows and Light uh, and the artworks will all reflect this in some way or other. Come along and see it! <laughs> My favourite memory of the Black Dog, well it's shown that there's been uh, a few but on opening night, I said to myself, I don't think anyone's going to turn up. And I looked around, and I was really anxious, and I think I've got other people anxious. No one's going to turn up. And then I looked at the doorway, and then one person turned up, and then two person. And I think, Joellen, you nudged me and said, look, and there was a crowd. And, the <laughs> yeah, and then the line was around the block. So seeing that it had reached and brought a huge crowd in was truly magnificent. The two up here, I put them in, I think it would have been about two years ago, into the Black Dog. I think it was the first, the first one that you had, the first exhibition. And I thought, she just looks so, you know, melancholy, whatever. So I painted this second one, which was more of a modern woman, with the same feeling about her. So when I called that one depression, and that one melancholy. It's the different eras. It's the same disease, it's the same problem. It's been around forever, really. I think uh, most people at some stage in their life have trouble with you know, anxiety or depression, but I think when I really became aware of it was when I was working as a neighbourhood worker and um, I learned there how important relationships, neighbourhood relationships were with people who were struggling a little bit. I want you to tell me about when you got anxiety and depression, um, can you tell me about that? I was when um, I couldn't find work. I this is after your husband died. It's very depressed. I had no relatives, no no one to go to. One thing where it's manifested is when. Um, People that I love, if they say they're going to turn up and they don't turn up at that time, I get this sense of, well, where are they? You know, what's has something bad happened? I suppose mainly when I um, had my brain tumour, um, I went through a lot of anxiety. Um, like even if I wanted to try and show and love my, show how, to, how I love my mum and dad. Uh, we come out the wrong way and it would come out with a lot of anger. I worry about everything. I worry about the world and um, I worry about the people I love. Um, I'm just a worrier. I've always been called a worrier. So again, um, I think I was in my 30s before I started to realise that there was actually a reason for all this happening. I think I've had it my whole life. Um, but it really came to a head when I was at uni and dealing with all of the academic pressures and had to drop out of my honours year because it was so paralysing. Yeah. Um, that's when I realised there was quite a significant issue that I should probably deal with. Um, my husband was depressed all his life, so I certainly learned to live with someone who experienced anxiety and depression. He had a couple of nervous breakdowns. And In my 20s, I went through um, probably about three or four years of um, panic attacks. But um, I did always have something that 
Uh, I like to do like going to CAE and I learnt to do sign writing, I learnt to do calligraphy. I did woodwork for six and a half years at the tech school at Caulfield. You have to have something for you. Um, over time that's been helpful to you um, in dealing with anxiety in particular? Art. Art's been the main thing. It helps me to keep sane. Wow. If I was to stay home all day long, mm. I'd be a mess. I'd be in a nursing home and I'll never go there, never. I kept secret my black dog and so I just came to a point in life where I thought I can't keep a secret anymore and my clients were resonating with me that they were saying that they thought family didn't understand that um, there was this re reluctance to talk about uh, anxiety and depression and I thought well I'm guilty of that because I never spoke about mine so I thought the best way to do that was to break down barriers and put on an exhibition of the artwork they created and invite people in the local community to put work in about anxiety and depression and see what we could do to break down barriers and stigmas. When it um, was first you know, talked about and I thought what a fabulous idea you know it's it gives people a chance to really express themselves in, in you know about what's worrying them or um, just the world around them. I suppose the other thing with my anxiety would be I'd say frustration is really linked in with that whereas I don't tend to get frustrated I remember I came oh, a few weeks ago and um, I did something and it was just crap <laughs> But I was more like that, like, oh, this is crap. <laughs> I, I wasn't upset about it or feeling frustrated, frustrated about it. But what has been my highlight is seeing the participants in my groups come and other artists come and actually see their work on the wall and take pride and that the exhibition has um, validated them as a person and as an artist and to see the joy, the emotion, the sadness and everything all put together is a true wonder to be a part of. Their faces are just beautiful aren't yes. they? and they see their work on the board. Yes. yes. In, when I'm working on black dog artwork or any sort of artwork it's it's quite interesting because there's that mixture of the deadline if it's for an exhibition mm -hmm. which is one of my triggers for anxiety yes but then there's actually the physical process and mental process of making the artwork which in many ways is calming and I know a lot of other people talk about you sort of go into a certain zone I find that uh, the art is um something that sort of takes your mind away from all that. Um, it's something that um, you can sort of express yourself. If I'm feeling disturbed or uh, anxious or worried about something, once I've written it, it's out of my system. It makes a huge difference. And then in a day or so later, I can tear it up and throw it away and it's all gone. It's finding something that is your passion that you can do. Um, and I think making things is a great way to find out what you can do. It's exciting to do, to do, to try and get what to one way, the way you wanted to do it, you know. You hear him say that when he's working with his art, you know, oh, I don't think this is really as good as a chore work, kids, or. Um, yeah, All he, he'll put himself it. down. <laughs> he'll always turn around and turn around and go back to him and say, No, you're still learning and you're still trying to do the best you can. So, and always sort of trying to build him up. I've never done any, any art at all. I didn't get the opportunity to do that at school, so I went looking for somewhere and found found Emma and had a chat with her and 
and then she's been really great in teaching me. I've just missed a corner there. The lizard was out in the shed, in a little corner part of the building here. And every time I walked out, it got, I thought to myself, I'd love to do you. Oh, wouldn't I ever. I got everything I needed and I started on it. Good. It took me a fortnight to do it. Is that all? That's all. And now, now what, what are you doing? You're doing the black dog. Now I've done the black dog for them. That's my motto. Yeah. You don't help yourself, you help others. Yeah. Again, it's all about learning that there's new possibilities because when you have a few upsets in your life, your self-confidence drifts, you know, it just, and until you prove your brain is wrong um, by taking baby steps <laughs> um, and just doing things a little bit at a time, um, that's, that's how you get there. It's the only way to get there. Yes, it is safe to be vulnerable and it is showing them that it's okay to tell your story. I spent 30 years hiding and not talking about my depression or anxiety. And so this is all about honesty and journey and saying that, you know, it's okay. You can have depression or anxiety. You can heal from that and you can have a successful life and a successful journey and you can work and you can still do art and you can enrich and help other people. Now, any more questions? No. That's it. Go on. <laughs>